from the bottom of my heart, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. For watching this guy's channel. No, Jody's like channel. Jody's Corner. No. My favorite. Thank you so much. <laughs>
I didn't like stuff like that. That's not my type of story. And overall, I really didn't like the Martha scene. I didn't like the death of Superman scene. I don't like how in Man of Steel you introduce a, a, a Superman and then in his own sequel, you kill him. It's these type of things that I didn't understand that I, I pointed out. I don't, it's, it's the equivalent of the beginning of the MCU, they introduced Iron Man, which was an amazing film. And then in Iron Man 2, before Avengers, they killed Iron Man. Marvel waited 10 years before they killed Iron Man. The end of the Thanos saga, the Infinity Saga. But Zack killed Superman in the second movie of his universe. How does that make sense? I let that be known in my review. And I, among many other things, the de Doomsday. <laughs> There's a lot of things wrong with BVS. Martha. Huh? There's a lot of things wrong with the film. I trash it. I hate that movie. The Ultimate Edition came out and it was a much better cohesive film. It was more along the lines closer to Man of Steel. It was a better film. Things made more sense. But as a superhero film, it's still trash. It's a better film. The, the, the Ultimate Edition, I gave it like a B minus because as a film, it's better. Man of Steel is an A to an A plus movie. I still haven't figured it out yet. I got to think about it. It's really darn good as a film. As a Superman movie, Man of Steel is like a C minus or a D plus. You get the difference? So it was when I lashed out at BVS that I discovered that there is a cult following of Zack Snyder. Devil worshiping, satanist, a lot of Middle Easterners who freaking are very vocal and vile. I've come across them. And I'm only giving my example, my opinion here. I've went against Marvel in the MCU. I went against Star Wars. I went against DC. But there's something special with the Snyder cult. That's what I branded them. Because I don't think that Snyder fans, all of them are toxic. There's a little small cult within the fandom that worship Zack Snyder's ground that he walks on and will do anything for him. They'll probably die for him. And I'm not even capping and gassing right now. I really think this. So when I critiqued his movie and the review got traction, people was retweeting, oh, this is awesome. And I got subscribed. They were like, whoa. They instantly saw me as the enemy. And ever since that day, February, March 25th, 2016, was the day that Jody's, Jody's Corner was a target of the Snyder cult. Anything that I say critiquing Snyder's movies, they would lambash me with F you, kill yourself, hope you die, you're toxic, you're fat, obese, diabetes, uh, kill yourself, all that type of stuff. Now look, I don't care about that. I'm with that, bro. I understand what it's like being on YouTube. I ain't soft. Now remember this, that word soft is gonna be said a few times throughout this, this video. This is the diary of Jody's Corner. Uh, you think you know, but you have no idea. <laughs> this is the E, Trollywood, true Hollywood story of Jody's Corner. So listen, we are in a soft trash garbage society, but 2016 wasn't really all the way super omega soft. It was what happened in 2017 with the Me Too movement and everything just blew the freak up. Twitter, Instagram, everybody getting castrated. Oh, wit, it's like a witch hunt. Witch, what do you mean? I'm just picking my nose. You didn't wipe your hands. Witch, it's literally, a lot of people got taken down. Weinstein, Bill Cosby, other people that deserved it. I get it, the Me Too movement is good for stuff like that. But there was definite toxicity within the Me Too movement of just lynching people. Get them, get them. They tried to get Chappelle. They tried to get, uh, they went against Andy. Andy got falsely hit by the Me Too movement. Lost everything. Everybody on Screen Junkies turned their back on him. Which lets me know that they never liked him like that. They were always rooting for his downfall. But that's for the people of Screen Junkies to address. They saw an opportunity, they got rid of him. Right along with Weinstein. Done, you're out of here. I said, Andy, bro, you gotta speak up. Man, you know, I had the lawyer, I, he did, his, he did his, his way, whatever. It's gonna be different here. It's gonna be much different here. So I'm gonna do a whole entire breakdown. This is what I'm doing, giving you guys a whole breakdown of what's going on. So there will be no misconception or no confusion about who I am. I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what I'm about. I'm a person who keeps it real and I'm honest. And that could be uh, saying negative things, yes. Very funny things, oh yeah. Sus things, what is sus? Sus is when I do gay things to my friends. Sus is when I do suspect things to my friends. <laughs> it is what it is. I embrace my sexuality. 
I embrace who I am. I have lots of gay subscribers. I have lots of trans subscribers. I tend to dab a little bit in the tranny porn and the shemale porn, but that, hey, hey, what do you want? Then people say, Jody, you shouldn't take tranny or you shouldn't say shemale. Oh, I shouldn't? So when I go to the website and I click it and I want to see it, guess what it's called? It's called tranny and shemale. So what you want me to do? Oh, you want me to be PC and say, oh, what, what I don't know, trans, transsexual. Uh, and she, I guess you can, I guess I can't, I guess I'm not supposed to say she male at all. But you do realize there's a difference between someone who's transsexual in porn and someone who is a she male in porn. If you want a certain looking type of one, you gotta go this way. So what do we call the one that's this? Freak that, bro. We just gonna call it what the, the site calls it. How about that? The show, look at that. I just pissed a lot of people off. I'm not trying to offend trannies and she males. That's what I'm, what I'm trying to do. But the trannies and she male friends that I have, and the ones that I know that are in the porn industry that do interviews, they call themselves trannies and shemales. They're like, I don't get offended by that. That's just some bullshit. And that's what I'm talking about. Softness of 2020. We are soft. This is weak. So trans, if, if people are really offended, then I will adjust what I say to help people. But all I'm hearing is people complaining that I said transsexual, tranny and shemale. They're only complaining that I said that tied to the Snyder cult. They're only trying to throw other stuff out there that I've said that's politically incorrect because they're trying to make me look bad because I don't like Snyderverse films because they value and love my opinion. You see what I'm getting at here? So coming at me because I say tranny and she male, when your intentions are to just make me look bad because you hate that I don't like Snyder's verse, it's bullshit. You ain't really for it. So when someone who is real, you know, trans and they, yo, I have a problem, I really have an issue with that. No, not a single person has come to me. As a trans, I'm offended, Jody, I would really like you. Then I'll be like, oh, absolutely. I don't, I, I'm not out here to hurt nobody. That's not what it is because I love and I care for people. I love and care for my boys and my friends. I've helped take people from the hood away from drugs, dope, and game banging to do this pop culture thing. I'm about to hire somebody full time to work under Jody's corner, getting another man out off the streets to do something positive. I understand my heart bleeds for people. I'm a very emotional person. I'm very sensitive because I care about other people. I do, I love people. I love interacting with people. I love the camera. I love talking to the camera. And the thing I love about this camera is that I could be myself. If Collider wants to be PC, and when I say something like, Oh, big booty. Oh, he said Grace Randolph has a big booty. That's sexist. Shut up. What am I supposed to say when, when I see a big butt? Oh, I'm supposed to, am I, am I supposed to just say to my homies, that was a nice, uh, that was a nice looking figure of a woman there. What wouldn't you say? I would say, yeah, nice figure. The figure, I'm gonna say, I ain't gonna say it to her so she could hear it to be disrespectful. I'm gonna say to my boy, boy, you know I do. To the camera, this is Jody's corner. I can say what I want to the camera. She got great, bro, woo! I say things. Cock, she male, trans, uh, sus gang, grab a ball. You know, on, on stream, we've humped each other. We've humped each other on stream because we're boys and we do that. What's up? You call it gay, call it sus, call it whatever the freak you want. I don't care. I don't care what people think of me, and that's the problem. That's why a lot of you people who have YouTube channels can't be honest with yourselves. That's why a lot of people who have do YouTube, they go crazy and loony because who they are in front of the camera is not who they are when the camera is off. You can best believe that this is just a transparent thing. And I know that some of this stuff, a lot of people who have never seen Jody's Corner know what Jody's Corner is about. I am about my emotions and my realness. That leads me and my passion. That's it. I'm an emotional creature. I would weep and I would cry off things that I love. I would be mad and angry at things that I hate. I am a victim of my own emotions. Sue me for it. But we're gonna continue and we're gonna track along. 20 to 17, me too, everybody's getting casted out. That's when things got really, really soft for everybody. Everybody started to get squishy. The whole society that we live in, squishy, beta males, soy boys, softies, men who are supposed to be men, women who don't wanna be women, and men who don't wanna be men. So we have men who don't wanna be men, women who wanna be women, men who wanna be women, men who wanna be women, children who wanna be uh, adults, adults who wanna be children, and adults that wanna have sex with children, and children that wanna have sex with adults, and children that wanna be boys that wanna be girls, and girls that wanna be boys whole bunch of stuff going on right now. 
a whole bunch of stuff. I made a comment about a Netflix uh, trailer, um, uh, a trailer off Netflix called, I don't even know what the name of it, what the name is it, uh, Babysitter's Club? I think it's called the Babysitter's Club. Uh, shoot, I wonder if it'll pop up. Is it the Babysitter's Club? Uh, it was a scene on the Babysitter's Club where there was like this five, six, seven year old boy, male, who was a trans girl, dressed as a girl, identifies as a girl, and then they said, and then this girl went off, he's a boy, stop calling, you're traumatic, and can we have a, a, a something not, that's not blue? And I'm like, bro, this is a motherfucking child. This is a child. Forget the tra forget all that. Can anybody, and this is I'm gonna I'm a double down. Anybody who takes a five year old kid and changes him from a girl to a boy, or changes takes a boy from boy to a girl, is child abuse. I'll say it again. Child abuse. If you ain't old enough to go outside and play till it gets dark. If you can't go to the refrigerator on your own without asking mommy's permission, if you can't buy cigarettes, you can't drive a car, you can't freaking smoke, what the heck makes you think you could choose your own sexuality for the rest of your life? You are a child, you can't do it. And that's how I believe, and I just said it again. If you feel some type of way, I'm sorry, but this is my belief. If you feel otherwise, I'm not gonna say freak you. I'm not gonna say forget the freak, whatever. Go on about your business. I don't mind people who feel different than what I feel. If you disagree with that, okay, cool. We could be friends still. I could be homies. I could be cordial with people who disagree with me. The problem is when I say things, oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. I'm sorry. I could lie to you like a lot of other YouTubers do. I could pretend, oh no, see, no, that's just not right. We're not supposed to talk about stuff like that. So back to the sponsors. So yeah, uh, this movie is fantastic. Look, miss me. I will do, I will never do that. I will never sell out for a camera. I will never sell out for a sponsor. I will never sell out. I am all about being myself. That way, you know, if you subscribe to me, you're subscribing to me, not Jody's Corner, because you know it's me. So moving on. Here's how everything went down and why things are bad, really bad right now for certain people. I don't see it bad for myself at all because none of this hate is phasing me in the slightest. So, but let's do a breakdown of exactly the meat and potatoes of what is the latest speed bump to go over. The latest thing to go over because once before it was, you suck, you're hating DC movies because you're a Marvel fanboy, Jody. I was a Marvel fanboy when I hated BVS and Man of Steel. Then when I hated Thor Ragnarok and Avengers Infinity War and I went and made an opinion about that movie, the world shook. People made reaction videos, people made videos about my movie review. Oh, Jody's wrong. Ah. Then they called me a DC fanboy because I, 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 I didn't like Infinity War. So I was a DC fanboy, I was a Marvel fanboy, then I was just a piece of trash when I hated Star Wars The Last Jedi. Rise of Skywalker, Force Awakens. I like none of those Disney, Disney, those Disney Star Wars movies. Then I was just a freaking trash, scum, kill yourself. Star Wars fans are the worst, but then it's Snyder fans above them. It's Snyder fans number one, Star Wars, DC, and Marvel. I was, it was pick and choose after Snyder and Star Wars. They all just, I digress. So I was all these different type of things because I'm critiquing them and being honest. And being honest is one of the worst things to do on YouTube in 2020. Believe me, <laughs> because you can't please everybody. Being honest with myself, I can't please the world because if I say I hate BBS, the Zack Snyder cult is mad, Snyder fans are mad, and DC fans are half mad. If I say Infinity War is an overrated movie that's shallow and has eye candy and has no substance, <laughs> the MCU fans are mad, maybe some Disney fans, and then the DC fans are like, ha ha, it's weird how this fandom works. It's weird. So that's why I don't buy into it. I know it's bullshit. But things got real. Things got personal. I need to tell you the beginning of the story. The story starts off with Kanye West. Yeezy. Yay. 
as he calls himself, yea. We were on Popcorn Planet for the show that me and Andy do called Change Our Minds. It's, uh, it's every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And we were, Kanye made the news. This was about a week ago. Kanye made the news because he was throwing all these tweets out. Yo, pick me up the ranch, porn. You ain't gonna make my kids be porn, do porn and photography. Come get me, man. All you scamming, all this. Throwing out all these things without really detailing anything. It's just like, just throwing random shit. Spazzing out, going crazy. Just going onslaught ham crazy. And then we had a, a video about it. And we talked about the video. And, um... This is a clip right now of that video itself. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick. Uh, but let's get to this. Thank you, everybody in there uh, for sending the let's support. Let's go. Over. We Kanye, are back. So Kanye is back. So Kanye uh, has been out there tweeting and then deleting. He had a whole late night run of tweets that were kind of crazy. Let's be honest. Is, is it yes. fair to call it crazy? Uh, yeah, it's, it's no other way to call it. It's out of this world asinine, bro. Some of the stuff that he said. So I, I, I he, cause he deleted a bunch and I thought I had a, a place. I want to make sure I'm, I'm, we're going through sort of everything, but, uh, I have some of the deleted ones that were sent to me as well. Okay. So good. I'm just, I know there was a couple blogs that's Go ahead, yeah. yeah, I got, uh, let me, so that's since I have some answer. Uh, yeah, there was, uh, Okay, so as you can see, we're doing regular coverage of Kanye and Kim Kardashian. And then we was, I was like, yo, Ye going crazy. Ye this, Kanye, Yeezy. Man, this shit is wild. I was, we was, it, was an, it was a regular commentary video. Nothing special about it. Then what, what happened was uh, the next, I don't know, if maybe it might have been a Thursday or so, um, somebody sent something about Andy to Ray Fisher. And Ray Fisher said that this guy is... Uh, implying an agreement that he that Andy's racist. So then Andy made a video saying, "Yo, Ray Fish, calling Ray Fisher out for saying, yo, how are you gonna retweet a guy who says that I'm a racist?" And let's go ahead and check that video out now. Here, this is uh, what you're about to see is Andy making the video calling out Ray Fisher. And while Andy is live, listen to me, I'm not making this up. While Andy is live. And I'm on my way in. I'm on my way in. While Andy is live, Ray Fisher blocked his Twitter account while he's live reading Ray Fisher's tweets, which means Ray Fisher was watching the stream and then blocked him on the fly, which means Ray Fisher got caught lurking in the shadows. It's incredibly funny and it's amazing. Check this sheet out. Four years. I mean, I know there's no legal statute of limitations on this thing, but still. Dude, this, oh my God, this is hilarious. You are kidding me. You are, guys, guys, Ray Fisher is watching right now. He Block. just blocked my dummy account. <laughs> he just blocked my dummy account. He figured out how I was showing his tweet and blocked it on my second account. What are you doing, man? Come on. That is t petty. What What on earth is that move? Who else would have been able to do that? He just blocked pop my Popcorn Planet account. Yeah, his manager definitely takes an L. So why are we talking about Ray Fisher? Well, Ray Fisher made statements against Joss Whedon, Jeff Johns, and Alan Berg about how Joss is gross. He said Joss Whedon was being gross, uh, abusive, unprofessional, and it's not. A, and Alan Berg and Jeff Johns enabled it. Pretty big stuff. He tweeted that out on July 1st. And me and Andy were like, whoa, what's going on? And I've always, I've always heard that Joss Whedon was kind of weird, creepy, uh, kind of uh, pervy. I've heard this. It's, it's hearsay, but nothing of like facts and proof has come out. So instantly I'm still saying, wait a minute. So Ray Fisher is tweeting this random thing three years after Justice League has already came out in the height of the Snyder Cut film getting released. It's already releasing in the middle of the stem of the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, I don't know about you, but the real motherfucker in me, me being just a real you know what I'm saying? I said, this timing, I put to Twitter, 
This timing is suspect AF, like suspect as freak. This is suspect timing. And then instantly, here comes the cult. Hate you, die, kill yourself, terrorist, oh, F you, fat guy, diabetes, oh, 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 jeez. So I'm like, all right. So Ray Fisher gets wind of this. And, and, and mind you, July 1, when I tweeted that out, this is the suspect is timing. And then we, we did a video and we was like, yo, the timing is suspect. But Ray, what this fool do so we can get this motherfucker, bro? We about to get at Joss Whedon, bro. We gonna get our pitchforks and we coming, bro. Because we ain't for that abuse, negligence shit. We ain't for that. That's not what I'm for. So I'm like, all right, we gonna, me and Andy gonna ride for you, uh, Ray. I said, we gonna ride for you, Ray. As I know you're watching this now, we were going to ride for you. There was only one thing. Say what was done, Ray. What happened? A week goes by, nothing, crickets. Another week goes by. He says, I believe Joss's ex-wife. Joss's ex-wife who said a lot of lambastic things about him. And I'm like, okay, an ex-wife, you're okay, for sure. N nothing about what he said though. Three weeks go by, nothing. And then it's at the point where it's like, this is weird because let a woman get sexually assaulted, let a woman get abused on set and she comes out to Twitter and says, I was abused by um, uh, James Wan. James Wan abused me and it was unprofessional and it's not tolerable. Accountability is greater than entertainment. Let a woman do that. And then when they say, what happened? What did he do? And then the woman replies, to be continued or doesn't reply at all and lets it sit out there for weeks. What would happen to that woman? She would get attacked. We would attack her and say, yo, what, yo, these are big allegations of, that you're saying about James Wan. So what's up? How you gonna say he abused you and sexually and does this, this mistreatment, yo? What's up? This is Me Too stuff, SJW. You trying to take the man out. You trying to attack him. Cancel culture, cancel culture. She would have gotten attacked for it. So what's the difference for Ray Fisher? If Ray Fisher could put a tweet out saying abusive, terrible behavior, not tolerant, and Jeff Johns is terrible because he enabled it. When I heard good things about Jeff Johns, Jeff Johns seems like a good dude. Shout out to Jeff Johns, man. Thanks for Flashpoint. And I'm like, yo, you gonna let that out there for three, four weeks, almost a month? And just have them baking like that without saying what they did? And then here's the kicker. Ray Fisher finally broke his silence and because here's another thing. He blamed NDA why he couldn't speak on it. Hmm, NDA. Last time I checked, I didn't know that NDA protects you against unlawful acts. I didn't know that NDA will protect you from abuse. I didn't know that an NDA would prevent you from going to the police. It's bullshit. One no NDA. And I'm proving him to be a liar again because what happens after this is if there was an NDA, Ray Fisher was about to break the NDA because Ray Fisher tweeted out that he had a barber. Joss, Joss's Justice League, I had a barber there and he didn't get any credit on the credits for cutting my hair. And I know he was, to my knowledge, he was the only black guy in the studio and he didn't get credit. I'm like, what? I'm like, hold on, hold on. You tweeted something about abuse this gross accountability and then you follow it with my barber didn't get credit for doing haircuts on my taper when half your head got a shell cap on it bro and cyborg but show it was at that moment where i said ray you are full of shit bro you are using the black lives matter movement for attention and it makes us black people look bad that's what i said i said it on video on Andy's channel. I said, the timing was suspect and you proved me to be right because no other cast member is saying what you're saying, even though that there's hearsay about Jeff, no one's about Joss, but not Jeff Johns. No cast member saying what you're saying. Alan Berg replied to you and called you a prima donna because you didn't want to say booyah in Justice League, which I believe. And with Black Lives Matter, People are finally listening. You would use the one time since the civil rights movement where people were finally listening to people of color, finally listening to people like you and people like me, melanated folks. 
and you use the Black Lives Matter movement to get attention, to castrate Jeff Johns, Allen Berg, and Joss Whedon. That's what you did. And then I mentioned with this barber sheet, if you had an NDA, you couldn't have said that about the barber. You could have said about a, an employee that was not officially hired, that should have gotten credit, that d- got done wrong on set. NDAs are exactly to protect you, to protect the company from you saying things like that, which proves ain't no NDA stopping you from coming out, Ray. And then I went, and then he saw that video of me talking that stuff. And then we get this situation here. We made a follow-up video of Ray Fisher uh, um, reacting. So after the stream where Andy found that Ray Fisher's watching and blocks the account, this is when I come into the stream. And here's where everything kind of takes off for a certain amount of people and why most of you are probably here. Uh, Here we go right here. Check this out. Here's me coming into the live stream after Ray gets caught creeping. Yeah, check us out tomorrow night in other words. All right, hold on. Join, me, join with that video. Let's see if they're all, you guys in there. Can Jody hear you? Okay, hang up. All right, we'll get a quick, let's see if we got Jody on here. Uh, join with computer. Can you guys hear me? You there, Jody? Oh, it's my, it's my issue. I can't hear them. Hold on. Can I fix this? You guys there? What yep. a night. Ah, we got you guys. Jody's in the building. What up, my man? Ah, what's good? Can, hey. you, can you friggin' believe I caught <laughs> him live on the stream blocking my, my burner account? Bruh, Ray. Yo, pussy. <laughs> Mark and Dwee better than can't take the heat. Get up out the kitchen. We on a mission. What's wrong, man? What the problem is? All we're doing is just living our lives, man. Giving our opinions on these movies and shit, bro. We didn't say nothing that was, you know, f- vulgar or foul or nothing like that, bro. We were just keeping it a buck, man. You know, and for him to block your other account, bro. Pff, uh, Gay Fisher. <laughs> Gay Fisher. I was. Did you guys hear that? What did you guys hear? We did the Kim Kardashian, Kanye West stream like the day before about him going spazzing, yay, spazzing out on Twitter. And then we caught him wilding out, getting caught in the cookie jar, lying that I'm high above it all, but you watched Jody's Corner. You watched in Popcorn Planet. And you got caught and you got embarrassed. And then I called you, yay, Fisher. Yay, Fisher. Kanye, yay, Yeezy. Jesus, you know, Kanye West. Y- y'all know who Kanye West is? Yay is his nickname. Yay is his nickname. And in case you guys don't believe me or know about Yay, since you guys aren't familiar with black culture or hip hop, a lot of my haters are from the Middle East and are white who don't know about this black culture. So don't speak on it. But I'll show this for you right now. Ah, this is. Kanye West's official Twitter account. And what does he call it? Oh. Yay. Yay. Kanye West. Yay. Okay, so now we know that he's Kanye and it's yay. Tied to the Kanye video we did. And then Ray Fisher acting like Kanye. I called him Yay Fisher. Okay? So it's like, okay, that's that's a little tie-in, Joey. All right, so what's the big deal? So what, you called him Ye Fisher. Well, let's just go back to the video again, and let's re-watch in the slow-mo for some of you hearing and challenge deaf trash motherfuckers. Let's do it one more time. Here we go. Let's go ahead and play back speed. Let's go half speed. Yeah, bro, we were just keeping it in the bug, man, you know, and for him to block your other account, bro, fuck. <laughs> Yay Fisher. <laughs> Yay Fisher. I was watching. Yay Fisher. It's all there. I'm over this shit. So I called him Yay Fisher. Cool. So what's a big, a big, what's, okay. So you call him Yay Fisher. What's, what's the idea? Well, 
because I'm talking, if I was talking to anyone else, but because Ye Fisher is a part of Snyderverse and Snyderverse means Snyder cult, which means Zack Snyder, which means the cult. So what did the cult do? Here is Larry Bird looking mother freaker coming and taking my clip out of context. Here comes the cult. Cause you know that cult, every time Jody says something about Snyderverse, here come the cult. Check this sheet out. Look what he does. Look at this moron slow piece of shit. Look at this moron right here. Goes by the name of Poindexter Lounge. Check this nasty toxic sheet out. Nothing that was, you know, vulgar or foul or nothing. Remember that. Remember that. We didn't say nothing that was vulgar or foul. Snyder Colt. Rem remember that statement. Like that, bro. We were just keeping it a buck, man. You know, mm -hmm. and for just him to block your other account, bro. <sighs> Gay Fisher. <laughs> Gay Fisher. What was that? What, what what did he call him there? Gay Fisher. Hold, hold on a second. Gay Fisher. Did he literally just call him Gay Fisher? Let's uh, let's hold man, on. What the problem is? All we're doing is Bruh. just living our lives, man. Giving yeah. our opinions on these movies and shit. Yeah, we're just living our lives. We're just giving our opinions on movies. Come on, man. What what's your problem, Ray? Oh, we didn't say nothing that was, you know vulgar or foul or nothing like that no right? i didn't say it before i'm gonna say it now i i don't think that i did it before but i'm gonna do it now we we're just keeping it a buck man you know and for him to block your other account bro <sighs> yeah yeah for, for for us to say a bunch of negative and and vulgar stuff about you and throw you under the bus and act like you don't you're not a you're not a good actor and this is those why you can't lies. get any other acting jobs That's and not blah, me. Blah, blah, those blah. Are lies. yeah no no why would you block people like that oh for him to block you like that andy when See that? See that how you call me negative lies? He's not a good actor. I said Ray Fisher was one of the best actors in Justice League. More lies. But anyway, check this cultist trying to make me look bad and taking my stuff out of context. I'm going to get to back to him in a minute, but let's finish this up. When you're, when you're just, you know, like, you know, just going off on him and just harassing him. Yeah. You know, in a video. Gay Fisher. <laughs> Gay Fisher. Seriously. Seriously, tell me how that's okay. And there you have it. Now, here's the thing. He clearly knows I said yay, Fisher, because he, for lack of better words, Larry Bird here, he wants my thick, meaty cock down his throat. He's enamored and in love with everything that I say. He is just one of hundreds of Snyder cultists that want my balls to dangle on their chin so the meat be on their esophagus. They love Jody Joe. They're enamored with me. They don't understand why my quality is so good. Why do I have a studio? Why do I get donations? Why do I have clout? Why do people care? Because I'm honest. How about that people just respect honesty? You, so he knows I said yay Fisher. Do you know how I know? First of all, he has headphones. Second of all, he replayed it. Third of all, um, he's in the Snyder cult. And fourth and most of all, he was watching this live. And let me tell you what I did live. When I called him Yay Fisher, I put in the chat, hashtag Yay Fisher with a Y. I put it in the live chat, but because Andy cuts his videos, when you cut it on YouTube studio, it takes away live chat replay. So now I don't have those receipts to show that I put Yay Fisher in the chat. But it means to make him look like trash because he knows I said yay, but he made it look like I said gay Fisher. So what if I said gay Fisher? Let me educate you guys some more. Let's pretend I said gay Fisher. So when it comes to, that's why this generation is squishy and soft and mushy. Because back in the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s, early 2000s, when you said something was gay, it didn't mean towards gay people. When you said something is gay, that means, oh, that's whack, that's bad, that's trash, that's sauce. Hey, what you think about my outfit, homie? Man, that outfit gay. Dang, what you think about my J's, dog? Them J's is gay, get up out of here. It meant to say something whack, not derogatory sexually. 
Is it a bad thing to say? Sure it is. But so is cocksucker. So is douchebag. So is troll. They're all negative things. So he would know that if he knew about the culture, though. But he doesn't know about the culture. So for sure. Even if I said gay, it was in the context of it being whack. Because if it was gay homosexual Fisher, how does that make sense with what I just said? How does that make sense with the context of everything I showed you here today? My jokes are way better than that. And I'm much funnier than that. So I am insulted by him thinking that I said gay because comedically, it just doesn't hit. I said yay though. So, Jody, why are you making a big deal of some Snyder troll who comes at you? I ignore this stuff all the time. I ignore the videos. You know, my daughter died. You know, she died in um, 2018 towards the end. And right around Christmas time, my dog died. It was a tough time for me. You know what I'm saying? And um, people told me that, that, you know, people told me F my, my daughter who is no longer here. She died at, uh, she came out premature. She died a couple months later of an infection. And that was a really hard time for me. It was a hard time for my lady. Really hard, really hard time. And the cult, F your daughter, F your dead dog. Called my dog by name, though. That was crazy. F, F Simba, F Simba, he, you know. And, you know, the hate, kill yourself. I wish you get coronavirus. Um, all because of movie sheep. All because I talk, I talk trash on Ray Fisher and Zack Snyder's verse. All because I talk trash about those movies. I said nothing personal against Zach. I said, Zach seems like a cool dude that I could chill, have a beer with, look at some titties. Zach seems cool. I love 300 and Watchmen. He's a dope director. But your DC movies are trash. And people don't understand grasping different sides and different opinions. It, it just doesn't register to the cult. You said Zach in negative, I'm coming for you. So why am I giving this Larry Bird looking mother freaker attention though? This out of touch cultist why am I giving him attention? Well, let me just scroll up real quick and then you'll understand. This was tweeted by Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher tweeted this. He sent it to Ray Fisher. He sent it to Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher heard this clip. He was watching our stream. He knows I said yay. He knows. But Ray Fisher consciously, because we've already proven precedence that he watches our channel. So what Ray did was he said, I'm about to get him. He retweeted, not just a simple retweet, because sometimes you just hit retweet and let it go without reading and understanding. He put all, he watched it, heard it, and put a whole entire comment on it. He says, I'm able to tolerate a lot of things. Homophobic name calling is not one of them. Not sure who the person heard laughing is in the background, which is Andy, but they should both be ashamed. Thank you, Poindexter Lounge, who is a freaking trash name for a channel and sounds nerdy as freak, but when you look at him, you understand, for shining a light on this ignorance. And look at this, accountability is greater than entertainment. He hit me with the same line that he hit Joss Whedon with, uh, John Berg, and Jeff Johns with. So now I'm not just reporting on the news, I'm a part of the Ray Fisher slander campaign. I'm a part of the news now. You slandered my name by calling me a homophobe with homophobic rhetoric to thousands of people, 4,000 likes, 1.2 thousand retweets, and 75,000 views showing Jody's Corner being a homophobe because the whole world thinks that I said gay Fisher and they think I don't like gay people. Why? Because a cultist who follows and loves me and wants my meat in his mouth retweets at you and you know who I am because you watch our videos and you don't like me and you retweeted with a comment saying that I'm a homophobe. And now all these other people are coming out. Yeah, they're trying to dig up my shit, my clips, which I will say again right now because if you don't watch Jody's Corner, you don't understand that the real shit that we talk about. Now, right, let me tell you, am I biased? I'm absolutely biased. I am tainted. That's why I love children. That's why they're special. That's why I wanna protect them. 
because I know how special a child is. They're pure. They're not tainted by social media, parents, re- politics, and, and different religions and ideologies and walking into the room and seeing uncle with a cock in his hand or walking and seeing mommy having sex with a strange man. They're not tainted by bullshit. They just come out pure. Seeing that little black kid and that white black kid hug each other like that, bro, is what we all should aspire to be, but we're not. Because we, like you watching, are tainted by this corrupt world that we live in. I realize it and I embrace it and I try to live my life the following as good as possible as I can be. But I identify and I know exactly the world that we live in. We're trash. We're trash can society. It's only going down. We need divine intervention, but that's neither here nor there. I'm tainted. I'm biased. So are you. Everybody has it in them. Whether you're man enough or woman enough to admit it is entirely up to you. Because if I go and drive in Koreatown, right here in LA, I'm driving extra careful to make sure none of them crash into my car because realistically, a lot of the motherfuckers is old as shit and they can't drive. I said it. Um, when I go into an elevator and a whole bunch of old Asian people come into the elevator I'm holding my breath for as long as I can because I know that garlic is gonna come out in this elevator and it's gonna stink. So I keep it to myself though and I (gasps) for as long as I possibly can because I'm fat and I need a lot of oxygen so it doesn't last long before I take a good breath in (gasps) and I get wrecked by garlic breath. And then I lost my mic, shoot. I'm going wireless now, by the way, so you guys know. Oh, shoot. Mother freaker. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. This is my wireless build, you guys, and stay with me. Technical difficulties here. And that's why this video is going to be non-edited, so you know that I'm not hiding anything. Many people who do videos about themselves, they edit the shit out of them because they make mistakes. No mistakes are going to be made here because I keep it 100%, 100% a buck. Jeez, the cat's out the bag now. Let me just freaking put the freaking sheet right here. Damn. Fix that sheet later. Yo, yo, yo. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right, cool. And this bias is wrong. I shouldn't think that way. But I do. When I walk down the street in the hood, it's 10 o'clock at night, and I see five niggas coming up in the dark with hoodies on, I be like, oh, there's five niggas down there, bro. And nobody to cross the street. I'm crossing that street. It's bias. I shouldn't do it, but I do. Sometimes I'm bold. Sometimes I'm bold. I'll just be like, man, freak it, bro. I'm just going to go straight and see what happens. But sometimes I'll be like, bro, my, my, my red alert goes up. Like, bro, it's 10 o'clock at night. These niggas got on hoodies. It's five of them, bro. They coming my way. Bro, what's going to happen? I'm tainted. I'm biased. Um... When I say when people, when white people get wet, they have a smell to them. I don't know how to define it, but if there's a smell. When white people get in the pool and they come back out and they, you can smell them. I shouldn't say that, but I'm biased. What do you want from me? When I say niggas be loud outside the movie theater and shit, when I say I know when niggas be like, hey, bro, hey, 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 it's loud as shit, people be looking and they be intimidated, I understand it. Because I know we, as a, as a culture, could be loud, aggressive, and dominating. That's just who we are. If you don't understand it, you would make stupid accusations that people are making about me and about the culture. The bias is real, bro. The bias is real. I shouldn't say that Jewish people are good with counting numbers. My numbers ain't good, so I don't know, but I hear it a lot. In my opinion, I I can't say that because I don't have experience in it. I can only talk about my experiences. When I say Mexicans like to party all day and all night, Corona's on deck, yo, and they be partying like a motherfucker. I shouldn't say that. It's insensitive, it's racist, it's prejudice. I'm biased. But you know what? That's the world we live in. It's stereotypes. I get it. I have, I am a victim of them. So is you. 
The difference between you and me is, I'm talking about 90%, 90% of y'all. Some of y'all, there are some saints out here and good, you know. The difference between me and you is, I'm able to say it on camera and not give a freak. That's what Jody's Corner is built on, being honest. Saying what you won't say on camera, but I will. Not to be absolutely vulgar and hate, I don't do that. I don't throw out hate. I don't hate nobody. People mistake my eyebrows and the way I look and my beard and my blackness for hate, the black devil. They think they see me, they can be like, ugh, freak him. When I say, yo, that movie is trash, bro. That shit garbage. Get that out my face. When they hear that, they're like, freak this guy. Ugh. Versus somebody who says, oh yeah, that Transformers movie, it could be a lot better. You know, that, that's not, it's not one of the best movies out there. It's not really all that great. They love to hear that though. Nigga, that's not how I live my life. Nigga, miss me with that PC sheet. That ain't me. And I'm not going to be that for you. So we see that Ray Fisher came out and he said this. And then the cult and the hate is tremendously coming at me. That's not unusual. I'm used to that. Other people are coming out and people have said things about what else does Jody do? They brought up this right here. Look at this right here. Yin and Yang, the cult brought it up. Oh, look at what he said about Grace Randolph. This is Yin and Yang. It's a show about debate. And the topic was better YouTuber, Grace Randolph or John Campia. This show is to show just how good me and Andy are debaters. It's all about the debate because I, we love debating. And it's about getting hard topics to debate. Because Andy has issues with John, I do as well. Andy has issues with Grace, I do as well. So either one, and one side has to, def excuse me, one side has to defend the other side. So if I land on Grace, I have to defend Grace Randolph, who I don't like because she lies. And if Andy has to land on John Capia, he has to defend someone he doesn't like either. That makes for a good show and a good debate. Arguing against something that you don't, arguing for something you don't believe shows the skill. That's why I created Yin and Yang. It's a spoof, it's for fun. But these cult idiots who don't watch my channel try to make it seem like this is what I believe. Or John Campia. Woo! Bro. Like, quit, quit having John Campia come out of your mouth. Quit. She has 722 million views. So is if we're talking, you're so strictly stuck. Movie talk and Collider movie talk. Two highly original shows. Back to back. And he's and then killing himself those right shows now. shows to his own channel for the John Campia show. That is Andy pioneered. Is, Andy has to defend John Campia, and I had to defend Grace Randolph on why she's awesome and why she's the better YouTuber. Movie talk. I mean, come on. Granted, I did the debate show, and it's, you know, Australia's a lot. hair was rumored before it was a Flashpoint movie, baby. She's the one that predicted oh, Flashpoint. Well, Grace Randolph. Uh, she's she's just reacting to things. That's did you know this? Did you know that Grace Randolph I mean, broke the story? She's the one that broke the story. Presentation. Grace Randolph broke the story that Wonder Woman eighty four was a Flashpoint movie, baby. She's Which the one that predicted Flashpoint. She's the one that let the world know that Wonder Woman eighty four was the Flashpoint movie and introduced Flashpoint to the DC universe. Campia is so confident in his skin, he'll drop the N word like it means nothing in his Transformers <laughs> review to be the better man to prove that racism exists. That's how strong John Campia is, Jody. Grace Randolph has a bigger booty. John Campy has a very big booty and a big dong. Huge Grace, dong. Grace Randolph. Huge dong. Grace Randolph's breath smells like roses on a summer's eve. John Campy's mole is like a third <laughs> eye. <laughs> he almost broke me. Grace Randolph's hair was rumored to be copied by Beyonce. Oh yeah. Well, Joe, Joe John Campia is um, he's a uh, just a dynamite in the sack. So I hear. Talk about Suske. Grace Randolph is so beautiful that I wouldn't even dream of besmirching her lovely sugar walls John with my Kippy. filthy cock. John Kippy is <laughs> Canadian, man. He just <laughs> pours maple syrup all over that delicious. Time! 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 <laughs> Watch what Andy says. Oh, that is, that's oh, wicked. Get... The time is up. After the timer, we could be ourselves. We're like in character. 
And these stupid Snyder cult idiots think that this is exactly what we're saying in real life and what we really believe. This is exactly the type of idiocy that they do. It's, 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 it, y'all look so bad right now. It's, it's freaking funny. This is very funny. Now listen to what Andy says after this. Listen to what he says. It's so clipped. <laughs> so you hear that? That is, that's oh, it's so clipped. <laughs> he said, we are going to get so clipped because he knows that, you know, cultists are cultists and they're, they're going to clip us and take it out of context and do exactly what you idiots have done. So Andy told me motherfuckers of Collider and shit, people that I watched see this are trying to take me out and cancel me. How? For keeping it a buck? For some spoof shit? Man, miss me. Cancel culture is trash, bro. Freak your cancellation. That's what I say. Cancel me? I say, freak you. How about that? Go take this sheet line down. You got me effed up. Think I'm gonna roll over and disappear off some sheet that I ain't do. Off some spoof shit here and my opinion. Freak out of here, you sensitive, squishy, trash 2020 society we live in. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. And here's another one, just to show you guys what Yin and Yang is about. Here's a version of Yin and Yang where I had to play an SJW black woman defender for James Bond. How a black woman should be James Bond. Check this sheet out. It doesn't make any sense. I, I, I personally feel like it's, I think it's wrong that we were in a society where women can't be free and be who they feel like they want to be. Like, what about that little girl who grew up watching those James Bond movies, seeing and falling in love with the character from Money Punny to Octopussy, growing up loving the character James Bond, not because he was a man, but because he was a secret agent and she wants to grow up to be just like him, a little black girl who wants to grow up and be that. Why is it that we live, it's sad and it hurts my feelings to know that we live in a society where that little girl cannot grow up and be something that she wants to be in love so much because our society says chat no, going crazy like oh that. my god you can't we be know james what? bond because it's a man they could easily change that title of james bond to being synonymous just like 007 007 is a number that could be on be why doesn't she want to be her own stronger female character because that's why the whole entire reason of showing it here come on come on no, we want to be like the like, people that we admire on tv no, andy come on strong independent person why do you want to be this just yeah. as, as good oh because she's a woman she can't fight she can't do no, the same things that james a woman do. you're put you're labeling the woman as the man you're saying she can't be as good as the man are you jody so you're saying that little girl has to the only way for that little girl to be the super powerful agent is to be james bond absolutely that not that little girl so that can little be girl herself can't be her own awesome better agent? she can be herself and and that's the end of the day that's what you're missing andy and i want to no, educate you, you on no, this no, no. So, all right so you're going to own this but let's let's push you to the fire jody yes so you're saying a little girl she shouldn't be her own strong independent character she should be no. forced into the male's no role. no it's not a male role see your closed mindedness is, is saying that it's not a male's role tell that to that little girl when she was watching james bond as a kid so you're she doesn't see it as she's a... playing that role that's named james who's a, always played by a man who sleeps with women you're now selling her okay it doesn't even matter i wasn't even thinking about her sexuality I'm talking about as far as this little girl i'm talking about she grew up watching bond she knows everything bond she wants to be bond let the girl be bond these are the restrictions that you're trying to keep down on us is exactly what's keeping us from growing do you feel good that you're a part of the problem no i i, I if i had a daughter i'd want i would i would feel despicable as a parent if i'm like the only way you can succeed as an agent is to be the old male character that was a chauvinistic sexist sleaze bag the fact that you are insisting on that for your daughter is sickening I would want my daughter to be her own strong character. Women deserve their own character. And your archaic way of thinking of, yeah, just throw the girl in the male role. Because why not? Yeah, it's not going to be good otherwise. See, That's really you what see, you're implying. You see my brother? You, see my brother? you are admitting James Bond can't be good for that woman unless it's a man. That's how gross and archaic your thinking is, That's Jody. That's terrible. I was being nice. I was listening. That's I was terrible. humoring you. You are a sexist. You are forcing these women in these male <laughs> roles. Unbelievable. That's the only way it'll work, right? Mm -hmm. How dare you, sir? This, uh, this, women deserve their own strong, independent characters. I'm gonna pray for I you, brother. I my daughter in some, I'm gonna pray stupid, for you. some stupid male role. That is ridiculous. And how dare you force this poor, 
black girl I feel sorry and not for you. tell her she can't be her own version of the superhero of the superhero or the superstition. No, little girl, you have to be James Bond. Take that male name and you own it. You better take it or else. That's See, basically what you're doing. It's not really what I'm doing. You're missing it the entire entire point. Like everything I said in the last 15 minutes just went through one year and out the other. But you're a chauvinistic uh, type of a woman hater, so I understand why you would think that way and why you don't listen. So this is why I'm gonna say this one more time. <laughs> it is not Hollywood shoving her down our throat. It is a girl who organically loves the character since adolescence. Why is, she, is it that what, a girl? She... Okay, all right. I'm pretty sure that that's that's. That's just, I'm sorry, that's just good content. <laughs> that's just good content. Yin and Yang Wednesdays around 1 p.m. Pacific time, guys. Naturally, I'm not doing it today because I have to do this video. Otherwise, me and Andy will be doing Yin and Yang right now, talking about Dr. Pepper versus Pepsi, burgers or pizza, Gladiator versus Braveheart. Uh oh, Colt, hold this L. So, yeah, so in, 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 I want you to, to to let you guys know in closing that what I am is what you get on the camera, and I often joke, I often make a lot of uh, uh, sus, I often do a lot of movie quotes, I do a lot of pop culture references while I give my opinion. So what these idiotic morons do? They're clipping out, excuse me, they're clipping out clips when I'm quoting a movie, reciting a, a verse from a, a Tupac song or when I'm doing a joke and they clip it out to make me look bad. If you want me to say something that's out of this world, just come to my channel and hear it for yourself. But nothing that I ever say is in hate. I never say something to hate on anybody. I have an amazing amount of gay subscribers. I got tranny subscribers. Oh, jeez, should I not say it? I have, it's weird. I have tranny subscribers that send me their cock, bro. I got shemale and trans subscribers that send me their hard cock and they be like, look at me, Jody, check this out. Pa, that cock be big and hard and they pop it on the window. Pa, pa, you like this? I'll be looking at my D, I'll be like, fuck, oh, that shit crazy. I keep it pushing though. Because it's like everybody could be themselves. I got gay subscribers, bro, that wanna freaking penetrate me. And I'll be, I'll be having, I'll be flirting with them. It's fun. I love my subs. You can't call me homophobe, bruh. You know how many freaking booties I've humped on my stream? Cancel me. Freak you. Uncancelable. I keep it 100% real on my channel. I ain't worried about what the freak y'all got going on. At the end of the day, those of you guys who watch Ray Fisher's tweet, because that's the slander. That's the slander. I want an apology from Ray Fisher. He needs to delete that tweet, and he needs to apologize for slandering my name, my brand, and my family. I'm making this video, and I'm riding for my family and my rep because I need to let the world know what time it is. Those of you people who don't aren't familiar with my channel, subscribe by the way, if you want that real content. If you're a PC and you want PC opinions, go away. And the subscribers who are lurking or just want PC, they already know to go away, but they already know what's up. Subscribe for the real. So it's Ray Fisher that I'm against because it was him that caused bullying to come my way. He brought hate my way. He brought death threats my way. Uh, wish my daughter's death. Glad, uh, wish coronavirus on me. My dog. Ray Fisher, you did that to me. Because you made up a lie. And you ran with it. And you still have it up. And, I, and you blocked me on Twitter. And you left it out there for the world to see. Thousands, tens of thousands of people have seen it already. And you still left it up there. I believe Joss Whedon. I believe John Berg and I believe Jeff Johns because you lied on me. So why would I believe you accusing them when you lied on me and we're 24 hours later and you still have it out there? You are a piece of shit and you're a bitch. I said that, my opinion, based off you lying on me, bruh, during the Black Lives Matter movement. You ain't shit, bro. And you're going to get canceled up out of Hollywood because you ain't shouldn't get no more roles with the way you've been acting, bro. This is the stuff that you caused. And you're going to make some stuff up on, on Instagram. I'm a black man. I up black men. I'm positive for black men. I want to ride and strive for black men. Well, look what you just did to this black man or trying to do to this black man. Bringing hate my way to my freaking people in my community. 
That's what you did. This is on you. So that's just the gist of exactly who Jody's Corner is. I keep it 100% real at all times, and I'm a really nice dude. I really care about people, and um, I'm, I befriend people um, down for collaborations and stuff like that. I just don't typically, the reason why I don't do so many collaborations is because I know a lot of YouTube channels are fake, and I don't like to intermingle with them. I like to, I'm about that real. If you're about real and honesty, then we could get some work done. But until then, the, the movement continues, and I'm riding for my mother freaking Jody's Corner brand and my family, bro, because I ain't for that slander and disrespect. I'm not for it. I'm not going to take it lying down, and I'm going to continue to make videos and continue to make topics on this so long as the slander continues. Take that sheet down, that lie that I called you Gay Fisher when I called you Yay Fisher. Hashtag Yay Fisher. I can't wait for them shirts to come, bruh, from Jody's Corner, bruh. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Hey, Snyder fans, rejoice. Hey, Snyder cult, freak you. Cancel these nuts in your mouth. <laughs> Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'm Jody Joe. <laughs> and I'm off this thing, man. <laughs> Deuces!